Hello. Hi. Welcome. Metaphysical stores. New Age stores. We all like going to them. We all have our favorite. But have you ever thought about working at one? Well, I thought about it and I actually ended up doing it. I worked at a metaphysical store for about a year and a half. And this seminar is called Confessions of a Witchy Store Employee. Join me. Just to introduce myself, my name is Solaris, and I've been practicing witchcraft for about 15 years now. And I originally recorded this video two times already with one of my fellow ex-employees. And of course, Mercury Retrograde, you know, Zoom recordings was not on our side. So a big disclaimer before we get into the meat of this video session. Um, I'm keeping this as general as I possibly can. Um, I'm not going to give any really specific details about the store that I worked at. I'm not going to tell its name. I'm not going to tell where it is. Um, just out of respect for the privacy of the store itself. I still very much love that store. I still very much shop there when I'm in town. I have since moved away. Um, but I, I just want to say that I didn't have a negative experience at all. I didn't leave for any bad reasons, um, and I still very much appreciate them. So this isn't going to be a hate video. It's not going to be a negative video. And it's also going to be pretty generic because I also want to point out some things that anyone could potentially experience at any job at a metaphysical or a new age store. So let me tell you a little bit about the expectations that I had of working at a metaphysical store before I actually did. I was 19 years old, I had just started college, and of course I needed some sort of a part-time job. And I thought, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna work at the local metaphysical store and I'm gonna be the very cool, hip, teen slash young 20s witch who sits um, reading a book and sipping some tea and people will come to me and I will impart my wisdom unto them and and it's gonna be great and it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be perfect so um so that didn't happen <laughs> I did not start working at a metaphysical store until I actually turned 26 um, I moved out of the country went and had some super fun life experiences came back to that very same city, to that very same store, said, hmm, I need a part-time job again. And that time they were actually looking and I got the job. And if you don't have time to watch the rest of this video, or if you're also already very annoyed, which I don't blame you, to sum everything up, I would say it's a retail job. It is a retail job, perhaps with a side of counseling, <laughs> That's honestly the best way I can describe it. Um, it's Magical Target. You're working at Magical Target. And that can come with its own fun and interesting adventures and learning experiences. Um, but just to like put it right there off the bat, it subverted my expectations majorly. I think what I had expected from this job was maybe 10% of my experience there and the other 90% was a whole bunch of other stuff which we'll get into but yeah it's it's a retail job if you don't want to work a retail job please don't apply to work at your local metaphysical store however comma there is something to be said about the types of jobs you can have at a metaphysical store because not everyone there is you know some sort of a retail employee um there are people who are often hired by metaphysical stores to work as consultants and readers and if that is what you're interested in, totally different experience. That's not what I did at this store at all. Um, if that's what you're interested in, totally cool. But assume that basically none of this will apply to you. That's a very different experience and a very fun one, might I add. So let's talk about the people <laughs> who you will encounter at this job. Um, I will say that on the whole, I really liked my fellow coworkers. They were, once again, on the whole, very awesome, very fun to work with, very interesting people. Um, you're always gonna have people who you don't get along with at any job. 
it happens there too, you know, whatever. But let's talk about the customers, because here is where things get a little bit interesting. Before I had mentioned that this is a job that will kind of almost involve a level of counseling, and here's where things get a little bit different from your average um, retail job at a place like Target, for example. You will have people come into the store who will tell you things um, that are extremely personal. You will have people come in the store and tell you that their boyfriend's cheating on them, their sister just passed away, they, I don't know, just got fired from their job of 15 years. Um, I mean, you'll hear a lot of things. You'll hear a lot of good things, you'll hear a lot of bad things, but overall you'll, you'll honestly hear a lot of personal things. And that's usually because it will come with a question such as, um, can you recommend a stone to get to help with this? Or can you recommend an incense that I could burn to try to, you know, bring something around? Um, so just, just a heads up, if you're not someone who deals with that sort of thing very easily, you may want to either reconsider or maybe not necessarily, but definitely come up with a plan of how you will deal with things. I think it's really important when you work in a metaphysical store that after your shift, maybe not every single time, but after an especially rough shift, be prepared to do some grounding, do some protection work, uh, do some cleansing. Basically, you'll hear a whole bunch of very interesting things that you potentially wouldn't hear at many other customer-facing jobs. Aside from the very personal and intimate, potentially, stories that you may be um, given, uh, you'll also find yourself face-to-face -face with a lot of people from any faith, belief, religion, spirituality that you could ever potentially imagine. Uh, metaphysical stores draw, you know, as we all know, uh, a very diverse crowd, I would say, which is a great thing. And I'll also preface this by saying none of the customers who I still think about to this day with like, oh, they ruined my day, they made me really mad. None of it was ever because of a very strange belief um, or spirituality or something that didn't like mesh well with me. Um, so this is... It's an excellent learning experience, really, I would say. Um, when somebody comes through the door and asks for something for a reason that is very against what you do, is something that you would never do, or you think, no, this combination of beliefs can't possibly exist, it does. Someone has it, and they will come to your store. I promise. On the flip side of that, you will also get people walking through your doors who are complete non-believers. And... These are, they can potentially be kind of annoying to deal with because you'll get people who walk into your store and who you can kind of tell are already a little like smug and looking around like, mm. and they will be the person who picks up a stone or a candle or something and holds it up to you and says, is this even real? Does this even work? Oh my God. <laughs> you will get that question. Um... And I wasn't prepared for that question the first time. I can't remember what I said the first time. But um, after it happened to me a couple times, I think I came up with some sort of response to the effect of, um, do you think prayer is real and works? Uh, and I think I just like left it at that. I don't think I, I never got into like arguments over this with customers because that would, that would be weird. You should just walk away. Don't argue with people about things like that at this sort of place. Um, but yeah, I think it just kind of, like, puts into their mind, like, you wouldn't necessarily walk into somebody's church or place of worship and point at things and say, is this even real? So maybe it just, like, if anything, helps them understand, like, hey, this is, you know, um, these are things that people use within their spirituality, within their religions, and that's just as legitimate as anybody's spirituality or religion, and there's really no need to be rude and, and question things to people's face most of the time. Another positive thing to talk about, well, this is a, a positive and a negative, and I think you'll kind of see why. Your employee discount, if you have one. Um, but most stores will give you an employee discount if you work there of some kind or another. 
Be careful. <laughs> Be so careful with this employee discount. It is the most dangerous thing that has ever happened to me because you're at work and you are restocking shelves and you just got these brand new, very cool things and you say, ooh, I want one of these. And hey, I've got 20% off anyway. Um, and so you start to get things here and there and here and there and here and there and here and there. And suddenly your paycheck is gone. <laughs> be so careful. It's gonna be so tempting because it's almost like a bad thing to work in a store where you really like the products that are being sold. Um, this definitely was not an issue for me when I worked at a sporting goods store because I don't sport. Yeah, I would just say don't buy things that you wouldn't normally buy if you didn't have a discount, first of all. Second of all, just budget for things as if you didn't have the discount. Let's say there's a super cool $150 Osiris statue um, and you decide that you need it. Okay that's fine. Um, but you know, still budget for that as if you did not have the discount because the Osiris statue is not gonna pay your rent. I mean, I don't know if you have something worked out with him, but like, <laughs> probably not. So just, just be, just be real careful with that one. Oh, hi, it's your Frey Frey. This is Freya. Okay, let's get into some of my more interesting stories. And um, I might not be able to tell like the super juiciest ones. And um, also, like I said, I'm trying to keep this very generic. Um, I won't go into anything that I think would be like insulting or, or too weird or too, you know, specific to this store or myself. Just, you know, once again, for privacy's sake. So some customers may assume that even though you're not working there as a reader or a consultant, you may be able to dole out those abilities regardless. So I remember it was probably about like a month or month and a half after I first started working at this store, I took a call um, from a customer who was asking if we had certain items for sale. Totally fine. But the things that this person was asking for were like very, very specific things. And if you have worked at a metaphysical store, you probably know because I, th I think this is, you know, just a, an issue for most mom and pop shops in general. Um, we don't have like a computerized, itemized list of all the things we have down to the very specific detailed tiny items. Um, so he was asking for things, for example, like I want a mermaid carved out of yellow jasper holding an orb, just very, you know, very specific. And um, they were things that we potentially could have had. And so he would ask for something, describe it. And I would say, hold on, let me go look and check. And I would put them on hold, go out into the store and look for this thing. And I would come back and tell him, yes, we have it or no, we don't. And he was asking for quite a few things. And I could tell that as his list went on, he was getting more and more annoyed with the fact that I kept putting him on hold and walking away for a period of time. So he got to his last item on his list. He described it to me. And I remember him saying, wait, don't go look for it. Don't put me on hold. Just please use your intuition and tell me if you have this item in your store. Mm, my intuition says, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was just a really bizarre request that I I couldn't see happening anywhere else because hopefully people wouldn't assume that all employees at most stores have strange abilities to know whether or not a certain item is inside your store without having seen it. The other strange story, this one is really interesting and really good. So an important thing to keep in mind about a metaphysical store um, and kind of hearkening back to talking about strange um, stories that will be given to you by people. They'll bring in lots of different energies. Everyone who comes through that door brings in something very different and they may be very emotional and they may be, um, you know, experiencing a lot of different things. You never really know what's going to come through those doors. So... 
keep that in mind and you have this um, location that has potentially a lot of, um, you know, maybe powerfully charged items also sitting around at it. And when you have this swirling thing happening, um, you might have some interesting experiences. So it was the night after Samhain, it was November 1st, and there were no customers in the store. We were about 15 minutes away from closing and just me and another employee in the store. She was cleaning in the back and I was cleaning in the front. And we in the store have a small shrine area set up um, dedicated to the founder of the store, the first owner who passed away many, many years ago. Um, but we still have like a little memory set up for him. So I'm cleaning and suddenly I hear a, a noise coming from that area in the store. And I turn my head and I look over just in time to see the picture of this original owner just boop. And there is security footage of what happened. Um, obviously I can't share it, please don't ask. Um, but I remember, I mean, obviously seeing what happened in the video is weird enough, but watching my reaction <laughs> and watching me stand there, I was mopping and I just held my mop like, ah! So I walk over and I had mopped in that area recently enough that it was still wet, but I hadn't been over in that area for, you know, solid couple minutes. Um, I walk over and I, I see that his picture has fallen and on the floor where I had just mopped, there is a pane of glass, like a rectangle pane of glass that has been just split down the middle, just boop. Um, not shattered, there weren't any other pieces around, just, just in half, just in two. At that time, my coworker came out from the back and she heard something as well. And um, she said, what was that? And I said, I don't know, um, these things fell. And she said, oh, yikes. Um, and we know that on the other side of this wall where this happened, there was a restaurant that was actually closed at the time and no one was in there. We found this out later. <laughs> so we're feeling a little weird. We close up the store, we go home. I send a text message to the general manager who I know has access to all of the security footage on his phone. And I say, hey, can you just take a look at the footage in this part of the store at this hour and tell me, just tell me what you see. And he says, okay. And I don't hear from him for about 15 minutes. And when I hear back from him, he says, I had to show my girlfriend because I had to make sure I wasn't hallucinating what I just saw in this video. So in the video, you can see that this pane of glass, which had been sitting on this little shrine, it was actually supposed to be like a glass shelf that just wasn't in use and it was just kind of sitting there. You see that it just gets flung off of <laughs> the, the place where it was sitting. Just, I mean, somebody threw it. It just, phew, it just flies off. Big yikes. And being the day right after Samhain, being that the veil is still very thin at that time, you know, big yikes. So the original owner, um, their family were the ones who, who had owned the store at that time that I was working there. Um, they obviously knew the owner um, as family members and they watched the videos. They were also like, that's so interesting and so freaky and we you know we investigated we talked to the restaurant next door they said nope nobody was there at the time um you know we looked into this we looked into it we checked to see if there was an earthquake that happened we live in an area that doesn't have earthquakes by the way no nothing we don't we don't have an explanation for this particular thing um and they kind of i remember one of them said something to me along the lines of well dad kind of liked to play pranks so, <laughs> and to be fair, when the thing happened, I didn't like feel negativity. I didn't, and to be fair, when the thing happened, I didn't like feel negativity. I didn't feel any negative energy. Of course, I was scared because like flying pictures and glass, yikes. <laughs> but, but no, I definitely didn't feel anything like anything angry or like anybody was trying to be violent. Didn't feel it. 
but it just goes to show you that, you know, keep in mind that when you work in a store like this, maybe some interesting things happen. And I know that that wasn't the only um, example. It was the only one that happened to me. But <laughs> after that happened, I started hearing from like the general manager or something, you know, about like, well, I didn't want to scare people, but I had X, Y, and Z also happen. And I said, huh, interesting. So to kind of um, wrap up this session, thanks for sticking around to the end if you did. Um, I would say if you are still super interested in working at a metaphysical or new age store, definitely still go for it. If you're interested in it, do it. You will learn so much about rocks and herbs and different practices and authors. You will learn so much. It's going to be an excellent experience for you as long as, you know, the store is excellent, hopefully. But thinking back to my expectations back when I was 19 and um, what I thought I would be doing there, don't walk in with expectations like that to a job like this. I will say that there was an employee who worked at the store while I was working there who seemed to embody those expectations. Somebody who really like sat around and drank tea and read the books in the store and bended their pages, but they didn't really do much else. And they just kind of expected people to revere them as a very wise and sage person. It comes off as, as pretty annoying. So please don't go into this type of job expecting something like that to happen. It's, you know, your fellow employees won't be thanking you. They might not even be respecting you at that point. But thanks for joining me. Um, there should be a link below or somewhere in the vicinity of this video, um, a link to my Facebook page. If you want to reach out to me and ask any additional questions, you can absolutely feel free to do that. Um, it was a pleasure sharing my experiences with you all, and I hope you continue to have an excellent festival. Bye!